Hi, I'm Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. And I'm Madison Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. Madison and I right now are working on the new flute of the month. This new flute is called Celebrations. It's a, a flute that is designed to celebrate 20 years of making Wood Sound Flutes. We're really excited about it because, um, because she's here with me and we're going to do two flutes for this flute of the month. You could potentially buy both flutes as a set or you could buy one of either design if you want it. So this is going to be a low D flute. This will be a high D flute. And uh, Madison, you want to tell them a little bit about it? I don't know where to go with. All right, so for these flutes, we have the high D and the low D. We have a western red cedar burl and a yellow cedar burl that kind of complement each other in the opposite directions. Kind of going for like a yin-yang feel almost. So this wood, Maddie, this is, uh, this is the woods that, that I brought back last year after Mariah's wedding. Remember that trip? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> You're up there. You met this guy in Canada. I had a bunch of these woods, and you ended up driving home with 600 pounds of burls in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it, was, it smelled so good. These woods have oh, such a poignant... Oh, smell good. Oh, amazing. And very different from each other, but... but oh, in a so, way that complements. So, oh, absolutely. We call these joined flutes, when you have a flute made from two different pieces of wood, and then we'll join them in the middle and actually do what's called a tenon create an internal tube that actually provides for the strength between the two. You'll see more of that in a bit, because Madison's going to learn how to do it on these flutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm nervous, it's all right. It's so yeah. awesome. This is our high D, this is the low D, and what we got to figure out is what we're going to do at the joins on them. Part of me has thought, you know, turquoise is safe. People tend to like turquoise. Yeah, but if we're but, doing like a yin yang, I don't always feel like that. Interesting. Because yin yang is classically black and white, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I don't know if it goes with the woods, the only thing, but that makes me think of yin yang. Yeah. And I'm not even certain that I want to use any any stone materials. Mm -hmm. It's just there. Yeah, I just. So with Brad's flute, uh -huh. um, my brother's doing that trade with us for the kilns and things. Right. And so when I laid out his flute with him, I was actually thinking about our flute, and this is what we're going to do for his. And his is a little bit different. We're using redwood burl, but we're still using yellow cedar burl, so it's similar, but a little bit different. Right. So that'll basically be his flute. And awesome. then what we're going to do in between, we're going to do some uh, a line of copper, a ring of ebony with silver dots in it, and a line of copper, which we've done on... The flute I keep thinking of, do you remember that turtle flute that had the copper on yeah, the shell, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Remember that one? So that one, um, we did that that copper, ebony, silver, copper right. inlay, and I loved it. It was so luscious and rich looking, and yet it wasn't flashy. Yeah. And that's kind of what I got in mind for this. What do you think? I like that. I'm really excited about it. really cool. Yeah. I mean, we could do something like that on this if we wanted to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have a hesitation towards it, but I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah. So okay. I feel like it also really cool. What do you see in your mind? I don't know. So are we going for a natural end look on that? No. Or is it no, just that'll be an end cap. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll just make the end cap like that. Okay. So that'll be ten. Yeah, that'll get ten at all. So you wanted to do kind of like the, maybe like silver Nigerian that we, the dots in and whatnot, kind of vibe? Well, I think that would look good. Oh, yeah. I think it would look good. Yeah, it would look awesome. Yeah. But do you think we need more color? We have a lot of color. I mean, we have yellow and red, but like, we also have like the brown centered in it, the gold, the mm -hmm. little bit of purple that's in this. Yep, I agree. There's a lot of color. Yeah, I feel so like... I don't want to add too much because then it's going to be too much. Right. And I, and we don't want to take away from the wood. Yeah. Right? Because I like the woods, like more wood-based flutes, and I like flutes with like a lot going on, you know? Yeah. It's like a lot going on. It's cool, but also it's a lot. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Hmm. <laughs> and then we we'll do the tree of life totem. Right. What wood are we going to make tree of life out of? So, 
If we do, if we do the ebony there, right? If we do ebony there, then we can have an ebony base for the totem base, right? But I feel like the trunk needs to be a dark brown. I don't. And I don't think it. So. I don't feel like that ebony with the dark brown trunk. I feel like that's just gonna look muddy. Well, here's what I'm, here's what Pablo and I talked about a little bit is maybe using uh, some ironwood because ironwood okay, goes so well, yeah. right? And so if we had ironwood, got this little guy earlier. Right oh, there you go. That's perfect. Perfect. So, see, I think that I think that this, if we did the trunk with ironwood, oh, absolutely. I think it could be a standalone piece of ironwood on the on the flute. I don't absolutely. Think. Yeah, ironwood, especially this ironwood, mm -hmm. it just, it definitely could be, it's just like a little yeah. bit in it. I don't feel like it needs to have something that matches in it somewhere in the flute. And then what we can do is, when we have a head joint of the red cedar, we can do the leaves in yellow cedar. And when we have a head joint of yellow cedar, we do the leaves in red cedar. Isn't our tree of life green? Well, the logo, yeah, but we can we do it with other ones all the time. Okay, sure. Just like when I think of logo, I think green. I don't mm -hmm. know if we want to do something like that. Yeah, I like that idea of doing this. I like this a lot more than I like the Nigerian ebony. We've done that Nigerian ebony with the dots in it before, mm -hmm. and I feel like this is something different. And if we do, like, as a block, it's a lot. But if just, just that little slim, slim, sliver. Hang on, I think I'm. I feel like it looks cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> here's a little piece of it. Yeah, it looks good, honey. I think it looks sick. That, that is a good look. It's very interesting. Like to move it up. It's very interesting. What about... Put those two together. I really freaking like that. You think copper or silver? Let me see the other one. Yeah, I'm get you some double stick. I think copper. Looking yeah. at them next to each other, I think copper. Yeah. Yeah, I like copper. Because then that brings out the orange in that, and the orange in that. I feel like that's going to look dope. Yeah, each one of the metal inlays um, basically adds $70 to the cost of the food. Yeah, that's so the other it, thing to consider. If it doesn't stand yes, out, and exactly. it's not something stunning, I don't feel like it's but, worth it. So would you say that there's going to be two, four, and six strips of uh, metal? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do this, I think that we only use the the buffalo, uh, white buffalo turquoise at the mouthpiece and at the end cap. Mm -hmm. And maybe what we do is copper inlay on either side of the white buffalo turquoise. What about just on one side? And maybe. And and one band of silver in the middle. Oh, oh that silver? Yeah. Yeah. Like what do you think of that? I like it. I'm almost tempted just to leave it. Uh, I like the asymmetric. Because I like the copper against the yellow more than I like it against this. Yeah. So I feel like, and then if we switch it to the other side, but it needs both as well. I think so. Yeah, it is. I think it's going to look better with both. I agree. Yeah. Never mind. All right. All right. You got it, baby. That's what we'll do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark where we're going to put the board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put the board here. And this, this head joint piece of wood is longer than what we really need. Okay. And you want to mark also the shoulders. The board there. The shoulders are going to be at right there. We need that material for the shoulders. Okay. And this can be, we can turn this down on the CNC or we can turn it down on the lathe, either one. But basically what we'll do next, the next thing needs to happen to this head joint mm -hmm. is we need to turn this part of the material down so that we got a good round here mm -hmm. and we need to turn it down here. Obviously we don't want to go any smaller, we want it significantly bigger than than the diameter, the outside diameter. Right, so we have still have yeah, it's it, lots of stuff, yeah, it's shaping. Okay. So basically you're going to leave it as big as we can, okay. right? But we're going to turn all of that down. So just this to make is it round just to, to make this part okay. from here to here round. This part and then that. That part. Exactly. I feel like it would just be easier to do it 
I feel the same way in many regards, okay? And then you can bore this hole, and you don't need this one, we don't need to do with the, uh, the line rods. We'll just do it with the bits? Yeah, we'll do it with the portioner bit. Yeah. Just and go that, that line? Yep, and just go to that line right there. And then on the two, you can see we got way more material than what we really need. And ultimately, I want to have this line up so that these shoulders are a little bit long for a D because the hole's right there. Right. I want to have that line actually somewhere in here. So we'll end up cutting that shoulder back a little bit more. Okay. Um, that's something I want to fix in our code anyways. But And so that's going to mean that this tube could be from there to there. That's where the tuning holes are. So we need a minimum of that much wood below those tuning holes. Right. So for this one, even though we're probably going to cut some of this off, we'll just leave it as is. We'll bore the whole thing, and um, and that'll be good to be able to cut some of that boring stuff off. Yeah. Then we got to line this guy up. Okay. okay, so go ahead and, and do the same things that I just did there. Excellent. Yep. Okay, so the shoulders, you don't want, oh, yeah, you want to go right there where the line is, where it starts coming up off the body. Yep. Okay, excellent. Whether you're dreaming of your first native flute or wanting to create some custom instrument, Wood Sounds is where your dreams can be made real. My name is Brent Haynes, and you can reach me at 801-822-1415 or brent at woodsounds.com. Have a great day.